We're going to get started with using Eagle for education. If you have an Autodesk education account, you can sign in here. Then you can get access and download Eagle. If you need to create an account, this is the area to do that. And then you can fill out the necessary information to create an account. Download Eagle and then sign in. I've already downloaded Eagle and you can see up at the top right it has my name. You can hit the drop down here and click go online. This will make sure that you're connected to the internet through your account. To get started we're just going to create a simple uh, schematic and then we're going to show how to manipulate components within libraries. This is the splash screen that has some general information and we can preview things like if I had libraries I wanted to access or projects that I've created. So we'll start basics and work through some of the steps. Let's go to File, New, and let's create a new schematic. We have a blank slate here, and something I always like to do to get started is click the grid, and then I make sure my display is on. I'm gonna keep the defaults for now. We're using through hole components, and most of the headers are 0.1 inch. Let's hit OK. Now we can see the grid is on. We can scroll our mouse wheel in and out in order to change our uh, sizes and dimensions. The first step is to add components. So let's find the add part button over on the left toolbar and click add part. Notice that we don't have any parts to add. This is okay. We want to custom add our own parts and try to organize our libraries and components as best as possible. So let's click open library manager. We have a couple options to get started. Let's move over to the available tab. If we make sure that only show local libraries is unchecked, we have all of the online libraries provided by Eagle inside of this dropdown. This is a lot of libraries. I don't want to add them all in because I, I don't know if I need everything. So what I can do to get started is add one manually, but I need to download that first. So you can go to GitHub SparkFun Eagle Libraries to get started. And if you click this green button here, you can download the entire zip. This has all of the updated libraries for Eagle from SparkFun Parts, and there's some really good stuff in here. We're gonna use a couple out of here, so I'm not gonna download the entire library set here. I've just posted a link to the three libraries we're gonna use. So just click that link. It should ask you to open or save. I'm gonna save, hit OK, and then just be mindful of where you save it. Desktop, downloads, doesn't matter. I'm gonna hit save to the desktop, and then I'm gonna to go to my desktop, and there's my downloaded set of libraries. I'll double click that. I'm gonna take my three libraries, and I'm gonna right click them. I'm gonna hit copy, and there's a couple things I can do. I can just put them on the desktop, paste them here, and I've got my three libraries. And then I can go to browse, and go to my desktop, and then I can find my three libraries. That's an okay way to do it, but it's gonna only temporarily provide you the libraries for that particular project. I'm gonna take a step back now, and I'm going to install these libraries from the splash screen. So now that you know how to find online libraries, you know how to manually place one for a project, I'm gonna do it so that I can use them forever. So go back to your control panel, that home splash screen, and we're gonna to go to options. Look at directories up at the top, and it should say libraries. That's where all my local libraries are. So I'm gonna hit browse, and it's gonna show me where they are. In documents, Eagle, and then I've got libraries. So if I pull up my window again, I'm gonna take these three that I just unzipped, I'm gonna copy them, and I'm gonna find that documents folder, Eagle, libraries, and then I'm going to create a new folder so I can keep things organized. I'll call this SparkFun. And then I'm going to paste these within that SparkFun library. Okay. So now when I hit cancel, I can go back to this control panel, look at my libraries, and there's my SparkFun libraries. So let's go back to our project and see what happened. And those three libraries have just been added to Eagle. So our simple schematic 
we're going to have a six volt input, a 220 ohm resistor, an LED, and then we're going to complete the circuit. Let's go to our schematic and just drop our parts in. Let's find the generic LED. Just by clicking this down arrow, we get a bunch of options. I'm going to find the generic and drop that down again. And we're using five millimeter LEDs. If you notice, I get a schematic view and I also get the PCB layout, which is really nice. I can see that this is an LED five millimeter part through hole, and that's exactly what I want. So let's hit OK and notice we can zoom in and out. I'm going to just place this in space, hit escape on the keyboard and it brings me back to my add components. I need a resistor and instead of going through and trying to find the resistor that I want, I could just grab a 220 ohm resistor and bam, smack that in. But this doesn't look right. This is a SMD part. The surface mount part it's not exactly what I want so I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom click resistor generic find the axial 0.3 this looks much more like the part I'm using on the breadboard and this is a good generic resistor that I can pop into my schematic I'm gonna hit OK and I know I need one of those let's hit escape one more time scroll back up and we'll pull that resistor drop down back up. And then the last thing I need is power symbols. Under power symbols, I'm gonna use VCC for my voltage supply. I don't have a PCB layout for that. So I'm gonna to have to create a pinout or something later if I do wanna create a circuit board. For now, we're just making a simple schematic. So let's hit okay and let's drop that in. Hit escape one more time and then find your ground okay the basic ground is just great again no PCB layout but we have our schematic part let's hit OK and let's place that we now have all of our components that we need for our circuit to connect all of our components we're going to use the net tool but before we do that we need to move them they're out of order and it doesn't look very fancy so click your move tool and you need to zoom in probably to find the middle of each component but let's look at this resistor. Notice there's a red plus symbol that's snapped to this grid point. That's what we want to click in order to move our parts. So just click once and if it highlights red you can now move it along your grid. You can zoom back out in order to make sure that your circuit looks good. I'm going to start my schematic here. I'll put my resistor here. Again, you can zoom in a little bit. Find that middle plus sign for your part. Zoom out, click once, and then you can move your part. Let's do the same on our voltage. Click, we'll move it, and we'll bring our circuit down right here. Now I have a pretty clean circuit. Things are spaced out evenly and I'm going to connect everything with my nets. To connect a net, you want to make sure that you select that uh, circle that pops up. And then if you don't like the way that it's trying to figure out your part, you can try to move your mouse around to find it, or you can click one uh, area on the grid and then click to your component. Again, click, click, click and I'll connect these two. I've now completed my basic circuit and I need to make sure it's labeled properly. In order to label it properly, I have a name at the top and I also have a value. So I'm gonna use the value first and click the center again of that component. It says it has no value and we'd like to change it. So this was a 220 ohm resistor and I'm gonna hit okay. The value now shows up underneath the part. I'm gonna do this one more time with my LED and ask for a new value. Notice how it didn't ask you to change it because the value of the diode doesn't totally matter in terms of the schematic, whereas the value of the resistor would. So I'm just gonna call this green and I'll hit okay. That way I know it's a green LED. This sets up the basis for our schematic layout. 
if I really like what I've got, I can export my drawing to an image. I can get a bill of materials. I can make a spice parts list for simulation. And I can also make a DXF for other uses. I can create a library out of this. A lot of things you can do once you've created a simple schematic. All right, don't forget to save the schematic. And there's a couple places, but I'm gonna make sure I save it in that projects folder. And I'll just call this my test schematic. I'll hit save. And now you've just got your first schematic drawn.